Hello, my name is Ryan and I'm a developer at Sparkbox. Sparkbox is researching and comparing many of the different accessibility tools out there to help developers choose which one is the right tool for them. No tool is perfect and every project differs in needs. It's important to note that a tool that works for one person may not be right for you. Today, I'm going to go over the Pali command line accessibility testing tool. Scanning your website for accessibility issues is an important step in development, and Pali can certainly help. It is available for free and is hosted on github.com for easy download. While the availability and the cost of Pali is convenient, the setup may not be the simplest option for an accessibility tool when compared to other tools that require the installation of a Chrome extension. Pali is available for Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. However, I will only be covering the Mac OS version. Complexity of installation may vary depending on your operating system. The installation and use of Pali requires some familiarity with using a command line interface, such as terminal or Windows command prompt. If the command line is a deal breaker for you, please check out one of our previous reviews on Axe or Lighthouse, which run tests via Chrome extensions. Installing Pali is relatively straightforward. However, it does require that you have Node.js installed before proceeding. While I'm not going to go over how to install Node.js in this video, you can find the steps for installing it on the Pali GitHub repository, which you can find the link to in the video description. Using Terminal or Mac OS, Pali installs using just one command and is immediately available for use once it installs. Today we are testing against an astronaut's website which Sparkbox created with accessibility issues explicitly for the purpose of testing each accessibility tool. Using Pali with the basic default setup, you can run an audit with one command using only the URL of the website you would like to audit. This audit gives you a report right here in the terminal window of all the issues Pali found in its scan. You can also opt to have Pali compile a .csv file of the report for you, which you can do by using the reporter flag file type, and the file name of the report in your command. Additional flags are available for use with Pali and are well documented within the repository on GitHub. These flags allow you to make the reports more specific to a variety of factors. This also requires more knowledge and expertise for configuration. In this video, we are only covering the basics you get from Pali on first installation, but it should be noted that this flexibility can help make Pali an even more comprehensive toolset. If we take a look at our report, Pali gives us a list of the accessibility errors it has found. It lists the total errors at the very end and lists each error individually, both in terminal and in the printed.csv report option. Each error lists the reason for the error in the message, and in some cases, a suggestion as to how to address it. The WCAG principle corresponding to the error is listed which you can follow directly in the WCAG principles guidelines using the numbers listed in the error. If we look at this error for missing alt text in the image element, we can see that the error message lists principle number one, guideline 1.1, success criterion 1.1.1. The guideline mappings utilize underscores for periods and periods for spaces. We can reference the WCAG 2.1 guidelines overview to get more info following that mapping description. Using that information will give you further guidance on fixing the error and understanding why it failed. The report has two columns. One column lists the element that is violating the error. The other column lists a path to that element for context. If we inspect the page using the browser dev tools, we can find the element on the page using both of these items in the report. All of this combined information in the report guides and informs your ability to address the errors. Pali's limitations rely heavily on your comfort level with command line and on you educating yourself on how to configure it in a more complex manner. Pali's biggest strengths also come from its configuration for flexibility and scalability. While we can utilize it with a default setup as we have in this video, it can also become a much more comprehensive tool auditing multiple pages on demand with your customized criteria. Pali is free, open source, well-documented, well-maintained, and doesn't require a user account to use it.
The absence of a user account means it doesn't collect any user information. While Pally may not be as convenient as other tools, it is not without its own merits. There are extensions available for Pally that we have not reviewed in this video that may be useful to you, such as Pally CI, which allows the tool to do automated testing in your development pipeline of your site. This and other options are linked on Pally's website and GitHub repository if you are interested in checking out more information. If you are looking for more accessibility tools, please check out our playlist with more Sparkbox accessibility tool reviews. For a full breakdown of the Pally accessibility tool, look for my Foundry article linked in the description below.